Hello, mga Katribu, and welcome to another episode of Perfect. I am Francine, by Hello. the way. <laughs> Hello, I am Dina. And yes, it is an inspiring Wednesday because we have with us a man who is a distinguished leader in the world of retail. Yes, and let's welcome him. He's the president of Rustan Commercial Corporation and the chairman of Tarm Foundation. Let's all welcome Mr. Donnie Tantoko. Hi, Donnie. Welcome to Fairfax. Good afternoon. Yes. Very nice to see you. Yes. Fantastic to see you as well. Yes. Thank you for having me, Dina and Francine. Thank you. So, um, Donnie, let's get right on with it. Uh, How has 2021 been for you personally and as a business leader? I think uh, it has been uh, filled with a lot of... um, enlightenment that and new learning that could not have happened uh, without the, the pandemic. Of course, alongside that learning mm-hmm. and that, uh, that realization that we, we all need to evolve um, and we need to do a better balancing act of continuity and change and um, focus more on change. And alongside also realizing that every company and every person has to live more with purpose. And that purpose is probably a just cause that helps address one of the longstanding problems of the world and be very intentional about it and be a very um, deliberate and strategic mm-hmm. about it, mm-hmm. which are all very good um, things. Of course, there are the last 20 months has also been um, a lot of uh, turmoil yeah. mm-hmm. in terms of uh, um, what's going on around us and all the people that we worry about and also, um, you know, some fears about what's going on in the present mm-hmm. and what might happen in the in the near future and the medium term future. Mm-hmm. So it's been, I think it's been good and it's also been worrisome. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, um, somehow, because we're preparing for a new future and a, hopefully a better one, um, it's gonna and it's it's moving towards being mostly good. Okay, very positive outlook. Yes, <laughs> yes. But Donny, the retail sector has been among the most challenged sector in our economy. How did Rustan Commercial Corporation navigate its way into the crisis? Well, like uh, like many businesses, and inclu- especially retail, uh, which was one of the most affected sectors, but everybody was affected. Uh, the first thing we had to do was uh, deal with the initial shock, um, and you know, spend the first few months. Uh, we've been around. Next year will be our 70th birthday. Wow. We've been around for nearly seven decades, but something like that can can uh, um, really hurt mm-hmm. even the most longstanding and strongest of companies. So we didn't want to underestimate the impact. Mm-hmm. And, we, uh, and we've survived many crises, but this is a completely new one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we, we focused on becoming strong internally. Oh. We, we got ourselves organized. You know, we looked at the, 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 our people, as we always do when something like this happens. Mm-hmm their safety, their well-being. We looked at our resources. We looked at our, uh, the, the, you know, maybe you can say in more business language, our assets, uh, our stores, mm-hmm. our online stores, our cash flow, our, the community which we're part of, which is our suppliers. Mm-hmm. And um, once we, we, we got, we protected ourselves and we, got ourselves more organized and we made ourselves resilient for what we felt would be a prolonged crisis. Then we started to look at ourselves. A crisis is when we need to be even more present for our customers. So we we are in the service business Mm -hmm. and that means serve. So we started to then become more customer focused and see what's going on with our customers Mm -hmm. and not to make our revenues higher or or you know or sell our product how can we as retailers it's retailing is a craft it's a skill it's an expertise okay. built up over time mm-hmm. 
how can we um, serve them better and be present for them during this this you know unprecedented <laughs> episode for the whole of mankind and and we noticed that their lifestyles and their their needs were changing they they had a very different relationship with their home they had a very different um concept of what self-care was and what beauty was mm -hmm. they had a very different idea of how um, you know, how do you get dressed for mm -hmm. whatever you need to do on that day? So we, they, we had a very, they had a very different idea of how they wanted to keep themselves whole so they, they could be whole for others. And, mm -hmm. and as we deeply understood those things, mm -hmm. then we knew what to do. We knew what we needed to do when it came to, um, what we're, you know, we're very, we're, we're very strong and in beauty we're very strong in home. Mm -hmm. we're, we're very also very strong in service. So we organized an, uh, 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 an army of personal shoppers. Mm -hmm. And the personal shoppers um, was one of the ways we stayed connected with our customers. Our customers. But they were not really personal shoppers. They were, they were almost like a concierge and mm -hmm. also somebody who helped me understand your need. What jobs do you want to outsource to us okay. we're not selling product we're we're helping you find solutions mm -hmm. and we're trying to understand your need and we're trying to fulfill that so and of course you know even though we're disrupted but beauty was strong beauty. Home strong kids was strong mm -hmm. even though the overall retail was uh, uh, somewhat yeah very very disrupted there were Parts of our the parts of what we do, parts of what we have, mm -hmm. that were very aligned mm -hmm. with what customers wanted. So we 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 really just did what we've been doing for 69 years. Of course, we use mm -hmm. technology mm -hmm. and all of that, but it's really to be of service mm -hmm. and to have intimate relationships with our customers okay. and continue to preserve that intimacy especially during a crisis, mm -hmm. yeah. not only when times are good and... That's always been the mark of yes, Rustans, yes, yes. I think. Yeah, because yes. there's nothing like the Rustans, exp Rustans yeah. store experience, right? To actually being there in the physical mm -hmm. store. But what I would like I to find... That, yes. <laughs> what I would like to find out, Don, is how, how about the digital transformation of Rustans itself? Uh, would you say that you were prepared or this jump started it or it just uh deep you were just you were moved to deep dive into the digital transformation yeah um you, you know in many ways uh we were blessed because uh i don't know uh god made us launch an online store on august of 2019 oh. and it was <laughs> It was launched by my grandfather. He's the one who wow. Wow. launched it uh, in August. Uh, I think it was middle of August 19, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, you know, for a company like yeah. us, um, it sounds so simple, just open an online store, but it's not. It was, it was, it was very difficult to give birth to that store because it needed uh, all kinds of paradigm shifts in the way we, we you know, that we, we do our work, we create value, we, we build loyalty of our customers, we, we motivate our employees, and, and we work across the organization. So it was really, really hard. Um, but, and many times we felt like giving up, <laughs> but somehow we, we persevered and, um, and we, we were able to have something that was in very, very good shape mm -hmm. and ready to, to handle uh, ready to be of service when when the pandemic happened and there was this complete lockdown. Mm -hmm. So that that was that. And then um, we realized that when you're all working from home, mm -hmm. um, that whole situation, um, and then wanting to keep our employees safe, that made us um, automate a lot of the things that you had to do in the office. It was manual, mm -hmm. and so the. You know, it, before the pandemic, if you try to do that, people won't really cooperate with that because you're you're changing the way they work. Mm -hmm. But when the reason you're doing that is because of safety, 
then all of a sudden the whole organization supports it. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, how to get the payroll done. Uh, I mean, just really the weekly, daily uh, basic tasks. There was widespread and broad support mm -hmm. to do that all in the name of safety. Yeah. And then we, while we were on that digitalization um, journey, mm -hmm. we started to realize that, uh, and then we also made it safer for the warehouse, mm -hmm. you know, the, mm -hmm. the receiving that took, I don't know, six hours. Now it takes minutes. Oh, wow. And it's all scan, scan, scan. You know what I mean? So really? the, productivity the, gains, the productivity gains were enormous. Oh, because we just want them to spend the least amount of time outside. Mm -hmm. Not more than what's necessary. And only those who are absolutely necessary. Because we didn't want to expose our employees as well, right? right. So we, we did all of these digital things. And then the next stage was... Hey, as long as we're doing all of these things and making something that takes six hours, 10 people, one person in three minutes, where else can we do that? <laughs> ah. and this is all in the back, right? Right. And then we realized that there's a lot of smart people working in the company, mm -hmm. spending a lot of time doing administrative clerical stuff. Mm -hmm. So then, then the rallying cry became, we're, in order to tap the intelligence of our people at a time where we need it because we're trying to survive the present, while we're trying to innovate for the future, we need everyone's talent and brain power. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that's getting sucked by admin work that's manual, manual and clerical. And these smart, intelligent people doing this. Mm -hmm. So then that became the next trend. Mm -hmm. And then later, um, as the millennials working in the e-com started working with the, the people in, in the physical store side, mm -hmm. We realized that there's so many ways, even though there's a generational divide in, in, like in any company nowadays, there are so many benefits to working together and learning from each other. So I, I, uh, I, I, I love what, I mean, there, there's so much that's so uh, yeah. troublesome, but the, this, this evolutionary stuff, mm -hmm. even not only in the front, mm -hmm. but even behind the scenes, the, the the, the, the back of house is, is all, you know, it's just moving in the right direction because our company culture that was started by my Lola and Lola was is so strong. Yes. And it really showed up during this pandemic. And the people showed up. The, uh, hook, line, and sinker and all out also during the, the pandemic. I know, no? Uh -oh. And I can sense the pride in Donnie also. And what's beautiful about what you told us is that the evolution of the people themselves, the growth was I inclusive. It was for everybody, mm -hmm. generational or whatever mm -hmm. type of work you're doing for RMC. Right. Yes, and I think, I know, mm -hmm. which brings me to the next question, because um, uh, we've been talking about personal offering personal service to customers and going digital, which is completely naman separate, not human to human, diba? Uh -huh. But um, the the Rustan's Christmas theme this year is togetherness. So um, what inspired you to have this theme? Does it have something to do with your experience as a company as a whole? Uh, yes, uh, I, I, that's a really good point on the company side. Mm -hmm. um, but what, what the, the first, uh, the idea originated from just our own personal experience in terms of our loved ones and our family. So this, this theme of togetherness was done by uh, the marketing team led by Dina mm -hmm. Tantoko. And then um, it was um, uh, reinforced and supported by our, our CEO, Ms. Nedi Tantoko. So mm -hmm. I can talk about it like I have nothing to do with what I think is a brilliant mm -hmm. theme. Because at the end of the day, the theme has to, has to resonate with 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 ourselves and with our customers right? right and so what inspired us to have and it has to resonate at an emotional level it's not just a gimmick or a mark you know it's yeah. it's a real it from our place of empathy and knowing you we think this is the theme that if we start out with this theme and we make everything we do align with this theme mm -mm. then um you'll appreciate it right mm -hmm. so um, we, uh, we, we, we noticed that there's a lot of people like us wherein we're so isolated uh, during this lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, we can't even see our parents, even though, because 
for the very only reason that we don't want yes. to expose them to the sickness. We we might be the one who will give it to them. Mm -hmm. And yet, the, when you look at just our parents, you can look at this across any kind of loved one in our lives. Our parents need our emotional support. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to do it without really being together, uh, person to person. Mm -hmm. um, we need their, we, they need our support. We don't want to go to them. We're isolating ourselves. We want them to be isolated. And and so this 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 was a really a big big challenge for families. And I think uh, one of the other pandemics was loneliness. Mm -hmm. And um, we took that for granted. And how we'll never take relationships for granted again, right? right. Because we realize how important it is. And it's like number one. It wasn't number one before the pandemic. Now number one is relationship, mm -hmm. and um, and we know the loved ones we have uh, may may not always be there as much as we for as long as we think they will always be there. Right. So we, we we when we thought of all of those things, we said, let's make a stand on togetherness, especially as you know things are getting better. Mm -hmm. Uh, with respect to the pandemic, we can do person to person. Of course, it has to be done safely. You can't just do it recklessly. Uh, but let's let's make a stand for this, and and let's as Rustans mm -hmm. um, try to um, make the whatever they do to be together. Let's make it better. Let's let's make the noche buena better. Let's make the gift giving better. Let's. Um, Let's make a father and daughter encounter. Let, how can we make it more meaningful with, with how we do that as a retailer? How, how can we make visiting our stores, they, they've been on lockdown with you and your child, make it the Christmas village experience. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we, we thought of all those uh, things and we, we made everything align uh, with this theme of togetherness. In fact, are we going to do this or are we not going to do this? If it aligns with togetherness, let's do it. If it doesn't align with togetherness, let's not do it. Okay. So that's how we, we organized our activities and everything we did. Good. Very nice. Yes, <laughs> and I visited Rustans in Makati, and I think that theme really resonated among the mm. shoppers who just swarmed into the store as soon as alert levels were eased. Uh -huh. they, there's a certain warmth that continues to evoke in Rustans, mm. not just during Christmas, but during special holidays. Too. Yes. That's, what I wa that's why I want to ask also, to whom or what would you attribute RMC's longevity and agility despite the intense competition in recent years among foreign and local players? Rustans has solidly positioned itself as an iconic Filipino brand. I think the, the secret sauce of Rustans is uh, things that sound a little bit, uh, uh, you know, that they don't sound very tangible. Mm -hmm. It's really, our secret sauce is our culture. Mm -hmm. It's our vision and it's our core values. So we, uh, that, that is, um, you know, very, the core values is our moral compass. The, the vision is our North Star. Mm -hmm. um, what my grandparents instilled as a culture, mm -hmm. um, we're, we're trying, we, we you know, we, we protect that and we, enliven it and we get people engaged in it so those are the the things that should never change the, the what everything i just talked about but staying true to that we are really doing our best to evolve um but the way we evolve and the way we adapt is just a modern or today's expression of what our core identity is as a luxury and quality retailer, mm -hmm. as an organization that we we firmly believe that the best way to create shareholder value is to first create employee value. Mm -hmm. We're a people first organization because if you, my, my grandfather used to say, kung animado yung mga tao mo, mananalo ka. So no matter where you are, you're, you look like you're losing or you look like things are hopeless or you're, you're actually winning. If you want to sustain the win or if you feel like you're, you're on catch-up mode, you just got to make sure that our people are well-trained and they're highly motivated. 
And at the end of the day, even though you know technology is becoming more important, talent is still more important than technology. Right. And uh, and it's all it's really really all about people. So we we I guess uh, we're we're adapting. Or we're doing our best to adapt. Mm -hmm. we're, uh, we're very very customer focused, mm -hmm. and we're very focused on their lifestyles. And as it evolves, and we're trying to understand it, and we're trying to fulfill their lifestyle aspirations and problems, and we're trying to do that cost effectively with excellent service. Mm -hmm. um, all, all of that is important, but it, it's really the secret sauce is really our culture and it's our attitude of always putting employees first. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, just to divert a bit, people are asking. Who is the man at the back of your background? <laughs> of course, your grandfather. Yes. He's, uh... <laughs> what, yes. Can you tell us a bit more about, because you said earlier that there was a fellowship in your office. and Yes. Mm -hmm. um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Just I a can, random thing. I can talk thing. about him for like uh, uh, An uh, hour. a whole year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, well, um, what's the best way to describe him? Okay, you know, one, let me, he's our founder of Ustans. Um, he started from nothing. He, he, he was uh, 16 years old when his father died. Mm -hmm. And um, his family fell into financial distress. And, uh, but he has a never, he has a very optimistic and he, he always has equanimity and he, he's always uh, very, very optimistic. Um, he has an uncrushable positive spirit. Mm -hmm. And he, um, when that, that life, you know, your life is over when your father dies and you're only 16. Mm -hmm. he, he decided that um, no one is going to, I'm only 16. Um, I'm not the best person to, take over the family and take care of the family, but I'm the only one. So he decided to assume that role of his father. He he worked in um, the, the two families helped him. One was the Rufino family. Mm -hmm. They gave him a job as the in their in their theater business. Mm -hmm. He was the one collecting your ticket and also mopping the floors. Wow. And then during the day he would study. Mm -hmm. And and uh, the the Fabella family gave him uh, a job. Uh, sorry, gave him a scholarship. Mm -hmm. So he's studying and working in order to make sure his family take, gets taken care of while he's building his his uh, ability to earn more than just somebody who picks the tickets mm -hmm. and uh, mops the floor. Um, uh, and then uh, um, the, he worked his way up to. Uh, to being the treasurer. He was the most trusted person of the Rufinos. Mm -hmm. And they, he handled all the cash. And then one day they asked him, hey, uh, Benny, you, 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 you know, your integrity and your, you're so reliable, your integrity so high, you're such a diligent person. Um, that's why we kept promoting you over the years. Can, can we give you a trip? Can, can we make one of your wishes come true mm -hmm. and he said i want to travel around the world with my wife because he, he he never traveled mm -hmm. he was and he's a very adventurous spirit so he traveled around the world and it was during that travel that both him and my lola saw what the world had mm -hmm. in retail and what the philippines mm -hmm. had and they wanted to bring that first world quality to the philippines wow and um what do you call this? Uh, so instead of visiting the Eiffel Tower and all of that stuff, which is what their original plan, they started visiting the wholesale markets. <laughs> they started doing all these things, and they came home with twenty suitcases. Wow! And they sold. They they, they said, "Wow, well, we took the biggest gamble of our life. Can we sell all of this? Sana, we can sell it in three months, six months. We can recover our money." Mm -hmm. Um, otherwise, we're 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 gonna fi we are gonna have to figure out how we're gonna eat, <laughs> and um, well, it sold out in two weeks. Wow! <laughs> so that's the genesis of Ustans. Mm -hmm. It was it was, uh, and then it just grew from from, from there. there. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so 
Maybe a second thing to tell about my lolo. He's, he, he proved to me that, you know, they say nice guys finish last. Yes. He's the opposite of that. You know, nice guys like him, they succeed later. Mm -hmm. They always choose the harder path, the path of integrity, mm -hmm. the path of inclusive growth. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not all, you're, you're always sharing your rewards with those who make those rewards possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's sweeter. It's sweeter because you didn't sell out on your values. You didn't sell out on your soul. You you kept your integrity and your dignity intact, and you gave dignity to everybody who who are part of your team and your community. Yes. So in in the end, for me, by 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 my definition of what it means to finish first, nice guys like him actually finish first. Wow. What a tribute. <laughs> yes, it's a goosebump moment for yes. me. Such Thank an incredible, so beautiful, beautiful story. Oh, Very inspiring for sharing that. Yes. Donnie, you want to talk more about your other Role. side, your other passion, but we'll pause for a break first. Oh. Botomoto Halalan 2022, the Daily Tribune special coverage. Masaya, pagsama-sama. Bong, yung naumpisahan ko, tapusin mo. Mga bagong highway, tulay, tren, dapat ma-enjoy na kaagad ng mga tao yan. Kailangan lahat bakunado at laging may ayuda pagkailangan. Huwag dapat magkabalik ang mga drug lords para ligtas ang pamilya. Yung ginawa mong malasakit centers, maganda yan. Padamihin mo pa. Magkasama tayo. Tayo ang nagsimula. Tuloy-tuloy lang. Boom. Botomoto Halalan 2022, The Daily Tribune Special Coverage. Masaya, pagsama-sama. Welcome back to Perfect. We are with Donnie Tantoko of Gustans. So, uh, Donnie, uh, besides being an accomplished business leader, you are the chair of the Outstanding Young Men Organization. What moved you to take up the post? And can you give us a bit of a backstory on your acceptance of that role? Well, I uh, I was on the board. I was uh, on the board for many years, mm -hmm. and I was also the president, uh, serving under Mr. Manny Pangilinan when he was chair. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess um, being on the board with so many amazing people um, that are so accomplished. Um, I, I won't start naming them because I might forget one, but you, you read about them all the time. And, uh, and uh, being apprentice under Mani Pangilinan, I think that uh, that really, um, you know, made me, if given a chance to, to take over, mm -hmm. I would um, accept it. Okay. I would uh, accept the responsibility. Um, and I, I also saw that under Mr. Pangilinan, uh, TOIM um, just became much better and stronger and more uh, prestigious every year. And that's important because TOIM is the only, it's really, really special because the people that win mm -hmm. are basically people with an amazing God-given talent. Mm -hmm. They're not only the best in what they have mm -hmm. in the Philippines, but they're, for me, they're sometimes the best in the whole world. And yet, with that great gift that they've been given, which they can use to pursue wealth, mm -hmm. they can use to pursue power, they choose to, to use it to help the country, help their fellow man, mm -hmm. help some 
sector of our society that's that's really really vulnerable mm -hmm. and their lives are so simple so they they they, they put um their mission and their vocation with this great talent that they have ahead of maybe some of the needs that for us is is, is normal uh, for us to devote our resources to taking care of ourselves taking care of our families they do that they do that but the, the disproportionately mm. what they do with their lives mm. um, and I, I say this feeling that I don't deserve to be amongst them because I'm nowhere near what they're, what they're, what they're, what they're this kind of sacrifices with so much passion that I see them making. Um, how can I not, if, if I'm, if I made uh, uh, part of this in, in whatever role, I, I, I would, with all my heart and soul, accept it because there, there's, I can't think of any, anybody that gives this kind of award. I, I just don't know of one. It, there probably is, but. He's the only one familiar, and, and Mr. Pangilinan made it uh, more prestigious, made it strong. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to continue it because I think that more than ever, some force of good mm -hmm. like AOIM has to be very visible. And we have to make young people want this award. Yes. You know the people who win it so that there's an alternative to all the other things that are screwing up their values. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, while, while morality is getting blurred and there's so much more selfishness and so much disunity and polarization mm -hmm. in this world, this is exactly, there's growing inequality. I mean, this is exactly the time that TYM has to stand tall. Right. In, in it, not, not in a way that our way is better than everything. It's just, it's just there. It's a perspective. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, um, it's, we have to do it always the TYM way, which is, which is humble. Yeah. Like you. <laughs> now, take us back to 2004 when you received your own TOYM oh, awards. Wow. How did it feel back then and how does it feel right now that you're the chairing, chairing the foundation? Uh, we heard that your trophy is in your office and you get to look at it every day. Um, yes, I, I get to look at it every day. Uh, <laughs> Back then, um, you know, the, the, the people that um, nominated me, uh, I, uh, I really respected them. Uh, Mr. Larry Kwa, who uh, is uh, an IT person that I greatly respect. And then my wife, my family, my team mm -hmm. decided um, of all the awards that are, you can get as a representative of our company. Not not me as who I am, no, but mm -hmm. as a representative of our, our an ambassador of our company, mm -hmm. I think this is the award that mm -hmm. resonates most with our core values. Mm -hmm. This was my Royal and Shopwise team at that. I'm still in the Royal, I'm still the CEO of Royal. But, but so they, they, they were the ones who really helped me work on the, uh, on, you know, telling our story. It wasn't really my story. It was our story. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, when we actually, we knew it was a long shot because, you know, we're in business. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah. Um, so we, we, we uh, and they really liked what we did as we focused on our employees mm -hmm. um, and, and all that. Try to create a large and educated and empowered uh, middle class inside our company we they like what we did when we said quality for all means we're gonna do very be very intentional as retailers mm -hmm. to do something about growing inequality mm -hmm. um and yeah so we, we 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 had all of these things and and perhaps they felt that our company was doing tangible things we were it wasn't all talk mm -hmm. and at that time uh it really really affirmed us and 2004 and onwards were one of the most difficult years, you know, there was 2008, 2007, mm -hmm. with the crisis. The 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 the, the, the imprimatur or the, the the vote of confidence of TOIM and the community yeah. really meant so much to us, and we always remembered it as we went through, you know, the journey of a of a business that's trying to be a very high trust company in a very ruthless 
mm-hmm. industry. Yeah. So, um, um, and then reading that, it felt really good then. Um, and now uh, we're, 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 I'm, I'm in the board and I'm, I have a, a, a role to play. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, it feels just like God designed it that way. And uh, it's, it just makes my life feel worth living and more significant. Right. Um, and uh, when I look at that every day, it reminds me of why TOIM um, recognized us. And we shouldn't divert from that path, no matter what's happening now and mm-hmm. what happens ahead of us. It's making us more invested in our moral compass mm-hmm. and in our just cause. Yeah. Earlier, so, you were you were talking about purpose, finding your purpose during this pandemic, and I was curious a while ago when you were saying that if if you think you have found your purpose before the pandemic or it just got strengthened during the pandemic. <laughs> And does it have something to do with this role that you now play for the TOYM? You know, we, we discovered it already. I mean, um, for example, the fellowship was with a company that I founded 28 years ago. Mm-hmm. And um, our vision that was quality for all. And our, um, our core values is wisdom. It, it's followed by wisdom, meaning integrity, mm-hmm. sharing, daring, outstanding, and M is malasakit. And during the fellowship we had today, I uh, we were talking about it because um, when I asked God, can you please tell me what, it's my turn to lead the fellowship. Mm-hmm. What should I lead? What, what, what message do you want to give our, our people on Monday morning and it will nourish us through the week? And and they they they... God told me talk about wisdom. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's it's moments like this that we realize that when when God asked us Siguro, if we could have had that conversation in 28 years ago on our birthday, mm-hmm. I can give you anything you want. Just like he talked to Solomon. Mm-hmm. What do you want? And most businesses will say, I want success, I want wealth, I want power, I want, I want an easy life, I want tremendous amount of profit and cash. Mm -hmm. It sounds like what we asked for because of the core values that we started with, which came from God. Mm -hmm. We wanted wisdom. And, and, And through the 28 years, we've been blessed with survival and we've been blessed with growth Mm -hmm. because I guess by asking for wisdom as a core value and having quality for all as our North star and really being intentional that the growing inequality, we have to address that first inside our company with the mm-hmm. people who work for us. Mm-hmm. We, we, we've got we've to gotta be intentional about, you know, making them, making everyone care about excellence. And therefore, with that excellence in a sea of mediocrity, people are going to work hard for the company. Follow Lolo, kung animado yung mga tao mo, they'll give you their best work. They'll give you the best pieces of their life. Mm. We, we were able to do it and create a company around it and a journey around it. Uh, we're still with longevity around it. Mm. And um, and then, um, um, so we, we kind of knew that was our purpose from day one. Mm-hmm. We knew what it's like to have to have to persevere with that purpose along a 28-year journey. Mm. And then during the pandemic, oh my God, <laughs> one of the most, greatest ills of the world that just became a lot worse yeah. is growing inequality. And 28 years ago, that was already our vision. And we, we have a whole journey of and a track record of that. Now, mm-hmm. we got to have a bigger track record of that <laughs> uh, because it just got worse. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's why we're doing this TYM PGH and Royal is all over it mm-hmm. because the most important quality the most important problem with the growing inequality is access to quality health care. Right. So we, 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 and PGH has all these amazing doctors with TOIM value, amazing nurses, amazing healthcare workers. Those guys are so good. They could work anywhere. If, if, their, if their primary motivation was money and not their Hippocratic oath, they could work anywhere, and yet they believe in the PGH, which has a legacy. 
and they, 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 they have a strong sense of belonging, strong sense of purpose with the PGH, and their, 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 their profession, their, their, their craft, they want to give it to, um, in a place where they're probably not going to get as much money as, they, as, as the opportunity cost. There's an opportunity cost for them, and yet they want to help the ones who, have the le who do not have access to quality health care, if not for the PGH and our public hospitals. So that's why, in the end, it just kind of dovetailed together. And I've got a bunch of people in Royal working very, very hard on PGH. And that's why uh, our marketing manager and everything, they, they, they kind of need a break because they're doing so many things and this on top of that. Yeah, but uh, uh, they're also heroes <laughs> yes, yes. in their way. <laughs> Now, Dolly, can you tell us how you ended up working with three of the country's most iconic musical artists, uh, Ryan Kayabia, Gary V, and Lea Salonga? We heard that the song Heroes for the Project was actually among the first uh, first time you worked together with them. How did, how did this happen? Um, it's quite well, a historical moment. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we didn't even know that this was a historical moment until <laughs> until somebody said so, uh, I don't know, six, seven months into the project. So that was uh, pure uh, serendipity, right? Mm -hmm. And and when it's serendipity, you know, it's 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 God God's um, purpose moving inside Mr. Kayabiyab, uh, Gary, and also um, um, Leia. And not only them, but their family members like Anjali Valenciano mm -hmm. and Miss Ligaya Imutan, who's the mother of Leia. Leia. You know, so, so anyway, the, uh, that, maybe that's the first point to make. Uh, the second is that um, I approached uh, Mr. C, because I don't know anything about music. Um, and I said, hey, Mr. C, um, I've got this idea. And he probably thought I was, wow, this guy has, a, has no experience. I said, Mr. C, um, um, I, I want to do Live Aid. And, I, and a lot of people in your industry have told me mm -hmm. that I can, it's, it's not going to be difficult, you know, and I just have to do it. It's so simple, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And Mr. C told me, let me interrupt you right there and tell you that you can't afford it. You can't afford it. Um, so this is what I'm going to do. Um, and I just wanted to consult with him. I wasn't asking him to do anything. I, mm -hmm. I just wanted to consult. He's a winner. Mm -hmm. And the other people I talked to were actually not in the industry. They're just my friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are in the industry, but they're not TOIM. So I said, Kuya Larry and, and some of the board members, why don't you talk to Mr. C? He said, well, I'm going to talk to a musical legend. <laughs> yeah, you can, because he's TOIM. So I said, OK, I'll, I'll talk to him. And, and he was so humble. He was so nice. He was so helpful. And he said, Donnie, I'll help you. I'll just write a song from scratch. Wow. <laughs> he said, what? And then later, he goes, Donnie, um, recommendation ko sayo. Because I live it. Ang dami, right? Yeah. <laughs> he goes, he goes, um, um, recommendation ko sayo. Just get two singers. Keep it, Sim keep it pure, simple, and high impact. Mm -hmm. Less is more. Let's go with... Um, and then we looked at it. We, we looked at a short list. And of course, when you're looking at names like Gary Valenciano and Lea Salonga in that short list, you you don't even you you look at the. I mean, all the names are are, are very respected. Uh, there, if we got those names, also we'd be so honored. But our number one choice was Gary and Lea, and we mm -hmm. because of Mr. C, we got them. So one thing leads to another. Yeah. I mean, if I approach them myself, it'd be very 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 difficult. But <laughs> Mr. C's endorsement because they respect him. Mm -hmm. And then one thing leads to another. And, and then everyone loved the song. Everyone loved the reason why we were doing this. Everyone did it on, as a volunteer. Mm -hmm. How, and, how uh, else can, can everyone help in this cause? Uh, does TOYM have a target? It wants to reach for the Heroes and Mask project. Well, um, we have no idea what this will, um, how much money this can can raise, um, and since we have no experience, we we actually uh, went on a journey without setting a, a target. Um, but 
how how can people help? Yes. Please share the the video because mm. it's still important to create positive attention for mm -hmm. our healthcare workers. And if you want to donate, mm -hmm. please um, you know anything. Every little helps. Um, um, the smallest, the largest, any can help because they're the, the first trunk, whatever money we raise, um, we're, we're trying to raise it first for the people who are just pure volunteers. Okay. So that's the first tranche. Okay. And if we raise more than just what they need, which is about uh, 2 million a year, mm -hmm. then we can start to uh, help the other healthcare workers that are mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. so tired, mm -hmm. um, they're 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 not whole with themselves, so they can be whole for others. They they need equipment. They need um, they need uh, all kinds of help that will require financial support. And they're so tired. These are our soldiers, and they're they're they've been fighting this prolonged crisis. They they they've been out there. Yes. And they're, they're, sometimes they get sick as well, and they need all kinds of support. So first, the volunteers, if we can raise $2 million, we can raise more than $2 million. We want to help the, the, the other healthcare workers. We want to, even our doctors need help. Um, so, um, and even the PGH needs help because it, it, it had a fire, and it's still recovering. Um, yeah, I remember that. That fire, yeah. Yeah, it was in the news, grave. I think it's a really good yes, cause. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we can. I can listen forever to Don talking <laughs> about oh, oh what we should do right now. Okay. <laughs> what I'm learning. It's all about kindness yes, and paying yes. forward, mm -hmm. helping Filipinos, helping each other. Yes, it's very inspiring. Yes, I'm, yes. I'm inspired. Oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> What I want to ask you is, what would you advise? What is what would be your advice to young people right now? Maybe the Gen Zs who want to aspire to be future maybe leaders, leaders. and T O Y M awardees and mm -hmm. that. What can they do right now? Um, I I think I I forget who came up with it, but it's a really really beautiful quote. Mm -hmm that I try to live by, and I share it with my children as well, and, and, and everyone that I, my team. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it goes, what is it again? It's like um, the intersection of the world's deepest hunger mm -hmm. with your greatest, where that intersects with your greatest source of passion, mm -hmm. that's where your vocation is. And and if you can um, try to find that while while we're all trying to make a living, while we're all trying to build a career path, we're all um, trying to um, you know intentionally improve our means, our quality of life, take care of the families that we mm -hmm. were part of. Mm -hmm. If if some of your consciousness and some of and, and be very very intentional mm -hmm. about finding. Where is the world's deep source of deepest hunger? Where is your source of deepest passion? That's the craft. Mm -hmm. That's the mission. That's your special contribution to the world that you need to develop. And I'm sure you will be able not only to make that contribution, mm -hmm. it will sustain you. And, um, uh, you know, it will sustain you in making your life significant but it will also sustain you economically. Yeah. It, will be, it, will, it, will, it will be your, your, your source of long-term mm -hmm. economic success as well. Donnie, and you will persevere. Yeah. Yes, right. Okay. Donnie should do podcasts. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> you should do that. We'll give you one question a day. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank perfect, you. That perfect. means a lot coming from you. <laughs> Yes. Well, it's perfect for podcast. Uh, per perfect. <laughs> yes, you. Just, you know all the inspiration. Yeah. You're just soaking up what he's saying. Yes, and he's walking the talk. Yes, that's the the beauty of it, right? Yes. So, so, we've you. run out of time. Like I <laughs> said, you. you should have fun so podcast. Uh -oh. Thank you.
<laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, Donnie. But Thank you. can you give us your parting shot? Ito na yung final. Ito na yung final. <laughs> <You're looking>. Oh. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I, I just I, uh, thank you so much um, um, for w a wonderful uh, conversation. Um, I really, uh, that's the new luxury, yeah. you know, this kind of yeah. conversation that we had, Dina and uh, Francine. I, 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 I just want to wish you and I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Yes. And part of Christmas is um, it's about remembering and giving not only from our abundance, mm -hmm. but also from our scarcity to those who have less than we do. Mm -hmm. And I hope that we can all find it in our hearts mm -hmm. to help us support those in need, including um, the Philippine General Hospital mm -hmm. um, this Christmas. Um, so um, they need our help. And um, they're, they're still fighting this, this battle. Um, let us help them fight for us. Yeah. So, maraming salamat po and uh, Merry, Merry Christmas. Okay. Merry, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Once again, Francine and I would like to thank you, Donnie, for joining us this afternoon and opening up your heart and your mind to us all. Um, we hope to see more of you in our future shows, hopefully. Yes. Thank more you. conversations. I would be honored. <laughs> thank you. Yes, and to our Katribu viewers, watch Perfect Live every Wednesday at 2 p.m. on Daily Tribune's official Facebook page and on Tribune Now on YouTube for the replay of the latest edition. Mga Katribu, three days na lang, Christmas na. Yes, Merry Christmas to all. I am Dina. And I am Francine. And, and this, this has been Perfect. perfect.